Step 2. Endnotes. Let's talk about the various endnotes in a quantum network. And we're going to begin with the measurement node. This is the icon for the measurement node over here, which looks like a beam splitter with two detectors. And this type of node is the simplest of the quantum end nodes. All it can do is only measure photons. It's not equipped with any quantum memories, so it cannot store the information that these photons are carrying. And it's got very limited error management capabilities. And despite this simplicity, it's got some very nice and useful applications. One application is in quantum key distribution, where the measurement nodes are placed at the end of a connection, and they generate a secret quantum key. Other type of application is in a very uh, particular type of blind quantum computation. We're going to talk about BQC later in, uh, in this module, but for now just accept that it's a type of delegated quantum computation, where a quantum server or a quantum computer passes information to the end node and the end node just measures it. This way, the client who is here at the end node is capable of carrying out a full-fledged universal quantum computation, despite having only the simple measurement end node in its possession. The next type of node is a slightly more advanced node called computational node. We're going to talk about two different types of computational nodes. The first one is COMP-NISC, where NISC stands for Noisy Intermediate Scale Quantum. So this will be the type of nodes that will be first implemented in a quantum uh, network, or they're very likely to be the first ones implemented. It's a little bit more advanced when we compare it to the measurement node. And again, it's capable of measurement, but it's also equipped with a quantum memory. So really the type of uh, repeater nodes that we have been talking about it are very similar to this computational NISC node. It can perform error detection in the form of purification, but it is not equipped with the capability to perform error correction. And it's got universal computational capabilities, but this is subject to the limits of decoherence. As we said, this node is not capable of error correcting, so it needs to perform the universal computation fast before decoherence really kicks in and deteriorates the fidelities uh, uh, too, too much. Applications of these nodes will be in the, in the form of the first end-to-end -end stored entanglement and in terms of some basic distributed quantum computation. Now let's move on to the second computational node, the COMP-FT, where FT stands for fault-tolerant. So this will be the first fault-tolerant computational node. This one is quite highly advanced. It's capable of measurement. It's equipped with quantum memories it has error correcting capabilities. This is the big difference between COMPFT and COMPNISC, that this node is not only able to detect errors, but also correct them. And it's got advanced and universal computational uh, capabilities. Applications of this uh, COMPFT node will be in qu as quantum servers in delegated quantum computation. So this is the blind quantum computation or BQC that we have seen a few slides before and also in terms of distributed quantum computation. Now, these are the computational nodes. These are the nodes that perform information processing. Classically, we've got also nodes that just store information, and that will be the job of the memory node, or MEM. The main job here is just to accept information and store it for as long as possible. So this is long-term storage of quantum information, and it's got large number of physical qubits, and full error correcting capabilities. In order to produce uh, coherent, very long coherence times and in order to keep the quantum information intact, we need very large error correcting codes, which again require a large number of physical qubits. These nodes can measure and apply single or multi qubit uh, unitaries, and their main job is to keep very long coherence times. We want to store the quantum information for a long time and retrieve it with high fidelity but it's not really designed or capable of universal quantum computation because that's not its uh, job. The applications of such a node might be in quantum data centers and also in sneakernet. We have seen sneakernet in our lesson on link architecture where 
large storage nodes store the quantum information and the nodes themselves are then physically transported to their destination. Let's move on to the last end node type that we're going to talk about, the sensor node or SNSR. This is the sort of quantum equivalent of IoT sensors which we see in classical internet. So this type of node is meant to accept some signal and then do some very simple uh, processing that's supposed to then do either some measurement uh, with high precision or high accuracy. So these are, they have some quite simple storage capabilities and really their main job is to store bipartite or multipartite distributed entangled states. And it's these entangled states which then aid them in performing the sensing. They must have some simple measurement capabilities and the applications of such sensor nodes are in sensing of weak magnetic fields or performing precision metrology, clock synchronization, which is very necessary in uh, network operation, and astrophysics. Astrophysics is a little pe bit peculiar in the sense of networks, but there are applications which use entang distributed entangled states in order to better image um, astro um, images coming from distant stars. So these are the basic types of end nodes. Now there is no clear consensus in the community exactly how many nodes there will be and exactly what the definitions of their functionalities will be. This is still a topic of debate. Therefore these are just the basic types. See you in the next step where we're going to move on to the repeater nodes.